Welcome back everyone. In this video, we take our truck Beastie from Saskatchewan north into the Yukon Territories of Canada to the Arctic Circle. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay, so I know what you guys are thinking. Weren't you just in Utah? What are you doing in the Arctic? Well, we had to go back to Saskatchewan uh, to tie up some loose ends. Uh, we had a wedding to go to, and then another wedding to go to, and uh, then we went up north and did some fishing for a while, relaxed, recuperated. Then we went to the famous boat launch where we saw Taylor launch his new mini boat, and we did some surfing behind the wake boat, which should look like this but in all actuality, I look more like this. And uh, one other thing I wanted to do was test our batteries. As you know, I upgraded from 4.8 kilowatts of lithium to 11.52 kilowatts, and uh, I wanted to prove that they were everything I'd hoped they'd be. So I switched off our solar panels and uh, logged the usage, and we made 11.24 kilowatts, or I was able to pull out 11.24 out of those batteries. So that's close enough to 11.5. So we hung out in Saskatchewan for a bit, but then we thought, what better time to go to the Arctic than now? So we packed up through Alberta and British Columbia, and as we passed Liard Hot Springs, we bumped into this fellow, Yaro from Switzerland. And he's traveling in his uh, 84 Defender, I think. And uh, we kind of met up here on the side of this river, and we thought, what better time to get stuck than here in the middle of nowhere? So we drew straws and he was nominated as the first person to cross the river. And so we sent him across here to scout it out because we figured that uh, I'd have a better chance of pulling him out than him pulling me out. And uh, he got across, as you can see here, and then promptly got stuck on a boulder. And so we set out to save him, crossed the river, taking a little bit different path. And as we got to the other bank, he got himself out but I thought it made for some good drone video of a decent-ish water crossing. Certainly the deepest we've ever done, so that was cool. We camped out there for the night, and then the next morning got a more triumphant-looking video shoot as we crossed back over to the highway side. So as we left Liard Hot Springs area there, the wildlife gets a lot more dense. We ran into this herd of buffalo and uh, they were doing buffalo stuff. And there's lots of bear and caribou and all that sort of stuff up in here. Then once again, we arrived in Watson Lake. Now we'd been here 10 years earlier, but uh, it had been a while. So we thought we'd stop and check out the signpost forest again interesting spot. It was uh, started by a, a, an American GI who was stationed there in 1942, if I remember correctly, and he was uh, nominated to replace a signpost that a bulldozer had knocked over with the distance to the next town, and so he did as instructed, but also put the distance to his hometown. And so that sort of became the thing travelers did, is he'd put a sign with the distance to your hometown written there and as you can see in these images it really blew up there's thousands and thousands of signs all right now all we have to do is find the sign that we put here 10 years ago all right i went back and i reviewed our old photos and this was where it was before right approximately there so, that's okay. It's actually here. It is here. Behind it. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> wow. Sorry about your license plate. Yeah, sorry guys. We'll but there we are. That is awesome. <laughs> there's the old. And there's the new. And it was about this time that Levi Allen from the left coast media house uh, got wind that we were up in the same neck of the woods as him so he 
left us a little bit of a treasure hunt there. Uh, sent us some vague photos that didn't really make sense at the time, but we eventually uh, were instructed that it was a treasure hunt. And so we went looking for those, uh, for what he left us. Not leaving my license plate here, it cost me 80 bucks. So from there, we made our way to where we thought Levi would be at Atlan Lake in Northern British Columbia. And sure enough, we found him sitting at the side of the road in a diner. So we popped in to finally say hello face to face. And uh, we actually were heading back up the same road. So we ended up camping for the night at the same spot we had spent the night before. Beautiful, tranquil spot right on the side of the lake. And we shared some stories and had a really good time, did a little video segment for his YouTube channel, just a little mini tour of our truck, and uh, you can see that uh, up here. Wait, I was gonna do a uh, photo. <laughs> well, we're in video mode. Yeah, you know that thing where it's like, <laughs> we're just gonna hang out over there for the rest of the day. We'll just leave you here. <laughs> hey! Hey, friend, Levi here. And Janelle. <laughs> the Florence Adventure Van, just exploring up to Alaska. This is our first time up here. It's a beautiful spot, Jason. Thank you. you I can't you, take you, any credit for it. <laughs> well, you showed us. <laughs> yeah. So this is their adventure van. You should check out their series on YouTube. They're they're putting the last uh, the final touches on it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As most people who've built rigs know, it's never completely finished. It's no. never it's never done. Never <laughs> use the F word. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great <laughs> one. And as most uh, corridors for overlanders go. Uh, we bumped into Jeremy and Rachel once again. The astute among you might remember uh, we met them in uh, Mulehe in Baja this last winter and they came up north also this summer and so we ran into them just outside of Watson Lake, spent the night chatting again. Nice to hang out with you guys. So that's one of the neat things about overlanding is you meet great people uh, with similar mindsets as you and then you keep running into them over and over because it seems the overlanding world is in a corridor of everyone's going to the same place. And so we once again ran into Mike and Nucha who were in their little Westphalia van with their son and puppy in Mexico and completely unplanned. Uh, they pulled in behind me as I was trying to back out of a parking lot there and honking the horn. So what's the odds of that meeting them in Mexico and then again in in the Yukon. So from there we headed north into Whitehorse, stocked up the freezer and uh, got an oil change and got everything prepared for the for the more remote areas up here and it's it's about there that you really start to notice these uh, overland rigs. Hardcore overlanders with Swiss plates or German plates they all kind of condense right here and so uh, start seeing a lot of cool trucks and start giving a lot of tours and and also getting tours of everyone's vehicles so you can really tell you're in the mecca of overlanding when you start seeing man trucks and and all these big overland rigs from europe showing up here and north of whitehorse it starts getting more rugged and remote and the space between towns and villages gets bigger and bigger and cell coverage is often not there at all so that's, uh, that's when you're glad you're prepared for every eventuality there might be. And so we arrived in Dawson City, which is a gold rush town from the end of the 1800s there. And uh, it's a cool old mining town, lots of old history there, old buildings that they've uh, fixed up to uh, show as uh, tourist attractions and old hotels and all that sort of stuff. Walking in Dawson. It was raining really hard when we got to Dawson, so our tours through there were brief. Didn't do a lot of walking around, but uh, really neat place. Uh, it's got a cool vibe going on that uh, hopefully we can spend some more time in on our way back. This is Dawson City, and there's a house going down the street right now.
then north up the iconic Dempster Highway. The road started off really good, hard packed, almost smooth as paved roads. The scenery is beautiful with giant valleys and mountains, and the further north we got, the smaller the trees got, which made it easier to see the mountains. You know, you've often driven through mountains and it's, you can't, you can't see the mountains through the trees sometimes. And uh, so this is kind of a unique landscape where the trees are small or shrubs at best, and you can really see the mountains uh, for what they are. It's a unique perspective. This is where the scenery really changes from, you know, mountains and trees, coniferous trees to just tundra and, and shrubs with very little trees at all. gorgeous I can't even I can't even capture it on film And the, the valleys are huge and go on forever and ever uh, with uh, jagged rocks, jagged mountains, rages just jetting out on the horizon and it goes on and on and on. You know, every time we'd stop at uh, a little where the road widened and we could pull over, Kara would hop out and take some video and take some photos and every one of them looks like a Bob Ross painting, which shouldn't surprise you because he, he lived in that neck of the woods in north, up in the north in Alaska for most of his career. So the Dempster Highway is almost a thousand kilometers long and it's a rough dirt road and when the weather is poor it can turn into a slick mud, mud mess hole of a place to try and navigate and we have it pretty good. Our big tires did good with the potholes and and lots of power to sludge through the mud so that's not a big deal but uh, it wasn't so easy for everyone teams of bikes who parked on the side of the road and hitchhiked to town and sent a truck for their bikes. Uh, there's tour buses in the ditch and RVs sliding into the ditch. So it is an adverse stretch of road, but uh, it's beautiful. Uh, of course, it's so remote. There's tons of free camping all over the place. Uh, we just pull off to somewhere like this where there's just a gravel uh, bar next to a river and just camp there for the night. And that's, that's gorgeous. Home sweet home for the night. And then finally to the uh, Arctic Circle, latitude 66.33.
and stopped and took some photos and a few video clips here, but it was intensely windy because there's no trees. Uh, the trees that are there are about four feet tall and 30 years old because they have such a short growing season. They grow very slowly. And uh, we'd, we saw one tree uh, had been cut down and a diameter of five inches maybe, and I counted 30 or 40 years of rings in there. So a testament to how slow stuff grows and how hardy stuff has to be to survive in that climate. But amazing views, amazing mountain uh, vistas there to behold. Uh, from there, we headed further north past Peel River and then uh, Sigachik, which is the, the Mackenzie River. Both of those crossings are uh, done by ferry, which is a free service operated by the Yukon Territories government, which is really great. Really super muddy the whole way, as you can see in these clips. And then uh, just past the Sigachik ferry, we're heading up a hill and I notice a decrease in power and it stumped me once again for the third time. Uh, and then we're sitting at the top of the hill, trucks barely running, it's just, you know, barely running. And sure enough. Hmm. I wish I had more fuel pressure. Okay. And there we go. So we've changed this fuel pump before. I think this would probably be our fourth time changing it. So, boo. How many times before have you changed the fuel pump? Or how many fuel pumps did we have? How many fuel pumps have we had? This will be our fourth. So it's not really been shown on the channel because it happened before I started building the camper onto the truck. Uh, but that's the third fuel pump I've put into the truck. And uh, I have a spare, but I was sick of buying this, the cheap Napa pumps, even though they have a warranty and I'd get a new one on warranty. The warranty doesn't do me much good when I'm a thousand kilometers up a dirt road in the Arctic. So I bought and had as a spare a Bosch fuel pump. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the fitting off of this threaded end of the pump. And I verified, the, or I checked before we left, and I knew this part threaded out of this one. Unfortunately, she had no go. Further, there's no nuts for these uh, electrical terminals included with the Bosch pump. And the ones off of this pump are a different thread, so that won't even work. And so there we sat on the side of the road. Fuel pump wouldn't, uh, I couldn't get it to mesh, couldn't get the fittings to, to connect the new pump. And so I tried to hitchhike another 100 kilometers into Nuvik. And I stood on the side of the road there for two hours and couldn't get a ride into Nuvik. He's back. Nobody wants to pick him up. Uh, I imagine most of the truckers aren't allowed to pick up tourists and, and the RVs may not have room, so that's cool. So sat there on the side of the road, stumped for a little while, then five o'clock rolled around and I knew I wouldn't be able to get into any stores in Nuvik anyway. So I went back to the drawing board, trying to figure out how to get going. How would I get this pump to somehow work with the fitting that doesn't fit? And so I made this copper coil from some heavy gauge copper wire I had in the back and tried to make a Healy coil. And to thread that in, as you can see, that didn't work. But I actually did get it to hold pressure. Uh, what I did was took some thick copper wire and just put it across the threads of the uh, fitting and then cut a cross section of a thick walled silicone tubing to make a silicone washer and threaded that together and that seemed like it would hold. Uh, and so I hooked that all up and it held pressure. Back to 75 PSI and as all good until I started the truck. 65 PSI and it just slowly dropped to, to five and the truck wouldn't run. So it wasn't actually the fuel pump. Something is plugging up my system. I've pulled apart the uh, Riff Raff FRX fuel rail crossover and I was hoping 
that this fuel pressure spring wasn't broken, and it isn't, and this little brass uh, plunger deal with the gasket looks to be in good shape and couldn't see anything plugging it up. So that wasn't it. Uh, if you know what the problem is, leave it in the comments below. And if you're right, I'll give you free stickers.